in one of my previous videos, I've had quite a few questions regarding how files get saved in Cubase, where do things go, how can you back things up and move them around, because I didn't quite cover it fully in the video I did, so I want to try and address that and make sure that I've covered everything as, as simply as I can so you guys can really understand the importance of making sure you're saving your files in the right location and Cubase is configured properly so you don't set yourself up for any shortcomings. Because believe me, the worst thing that can happen to you with your projects is that you lose all of the audio recordings or you delete something and it causes a massive issue. Trust me, I've been there. I've lost some projects, some a lot of projects when I first started out making music because I just wasn't paying attention to what I was doing properly. So here we go. On the left here in front of us, we have Scenario A, which is an unconfigured library where the user hasn't paid attention to where things are being saved and understood it, as their directory looks a little bit like this for their projects folder. <coughs> On the right here, we have a configured library where the user has paid attention to how they're saving their projects and where things are going, so it's not going to cause them any issues. First of all, let's explain what's happened here on the left. Now, when you start Cubase up for the first time after installing it, let me just switch windows here. What you'll find is that the default location for the projects on Windows, I can't talk for Mac because I don't have a Mac, but for Windows users, it's usually C users and something, documents and Cubase projects, okay? And it'll be empty like this. And this is the default location for where any of your projects will be saved. Now, usually when you use this here, the project folder, this is basically what your song is going to be called and the folder that's going to be created for it. So I'm going to put this as project A and create empty. Now, let's say we've just recorded a load of audio and we've made a track and we've saved it. And I'm going to name it project A when I save it, save it, sorry. Uh, what will happen is if I close this now and go to new project again and navigate to our location, what will happen is that Cubase will create a folder, its own project directory folder, and inside that folder there'll be an audio folder and your CPR file for that folder if you've made a track and saved it, okay? So going back to the other screen, it will look a little bit like this on the right, a configured folder. So we have the root folder and the project folder. And inside of there, we'll have the audio images and the CPR folder, which is how it should look. Now, if you find that your project directory is not looking like this, and it's looking more like the one on the left, then you need to quickly address this because you're setting yourself up for an absolute disaster in the future. And why it might look like this is because you're not paying attention to where things are being saved. So if we switch back over to the Cubase screen here and go to new project, what you might find you're doing is using prompt for project location. So what you might find is happening when you go to create your new project, uh, you're probably navigating to where your you know, project library is and you're double clicking on a folder that you've already created and go and select that as your project folder. Then you make your song, let's just add an instrument track here. You've made your song and then you've saved it uh, and you've recorded some audio and you called it, I don't know, I don't know, uh, Project B. Okay. And it will start to look a little bit like this. So if I open up that location, you'll see that you've got Project A. Oh, no, actually, that's not going to do it. Let me just do this a different way. <clears throat> so you open up the project location and it looks a little bit like this. Okay, so you have your audio in Project A and Project B because you've selected things like that. Now, the trouble with this is when you record any audio for your different projects, if you keep saving things in this way, all of the audio and edits that you've done are all put into that audio folder, okay? Which is what we don't want. We don't want this happening because all of those recordings, if something ever happened to this folder, it gets deleted, or you have to reinstall your OS drive, then you can kiss goodbye to anything that you've recorded or anything that you've imported, like one-shot samples and manipulated and bounced down. Those will be gone, okay? Those will be gone. Then there's nothing you can do about that. And that's happened to me in the past, and I've lost a lot of projects. When, when I first started out, 
I made that mistake and that's what you don't want to do when setting up and saving your projects because you just it's just not a good feeling okay now just to clarify what actually gets saved into the audio folder if you record things like through your microphone you know vocals guitars whatever that gets saved to your audio folder if you're using a VST sample library and you're using MIDI to trigger samples from a library, those audio files don't get saved in the audio folder. The only thing that gets put in the audio folder is anything that you've imported or recorded or rendered down into the audio pool of Cubase. That will be put into that folder, okay? So that's, that's important to remember. So if you did delete the audio folder and you did a load of stuff with MIDI, the MIDI will still be there. And if you haven't deleted, you know, your, pl your plugins or anything like that, it will remember where to load up your plugins from, like your VST instruments and stuff that use the MIDI to make the sounds to trigger the samples, and they'll be fine. It's only if you've actually physically recorded stuff or manipulated anything and saved it into the pool. Now, a configured library looks a little bit more like this on the right, okay? But what I strongly advise is when you start Cubase up for the first time, I would advise you start a new library directory for storing your projects in and not use the C drive. It's just not a good idea. The reason why is that if anything happens to your OS, you're going to lose stuff, okay? And it's just not a good idea. Anything important like your documents, important project files, just never save them on an OS drive. Videos, anything, just never do it. It's just not a good idea. The only thing that should be going on your C drive or your OS drive is software, and that is it. Sample content, sample uh, packs, all that kind of stuff, put it on a different hard drive, okay? Be on the safe side. Same with your projects, put them on a different hard drive. So for this, I'm using the G drive, which is where I've actually got mine set up. I've got a few hard drives in my computer. So what I would advise you do for the first time is you can do this a couple of ways, um, depending on what version of Cubase you're using. But you can go to File, New Library, and then you can just pick one of your other hard drives here. I've created a folder that says Cubase Projects, and I can select that. And what should happen is that Cubase should remember this default library location, but sometimes it doesn't tend to do it. So what we need to do is go back to new project. And then here where it says use default location, change this. I mean, you don't need to use a new library if you've just created a folder on a different drive and you want to use that as your root folder, then you can just navigate to it from here. So I'm going to select that folder on the G drive we've created called Cubase projects. And now, when I start a new project, for example, project A, which I've already typed in there and create empty. We've made some audio, we've done some stuff. We've saved the track, blah, blah, blah. When I now go to my projects drive, I can see that, that inside the root folder, there's the project and inside that I have the audio file and the CPR file for that project. So it will look more like here on the right, which is what we want. So for every song we create, we want our own project folder, and inside that it will have the audio and images and the actual CPR file. So we know anytime we record any audio and save it, it's going to be stored into that audio folder. And then the next time we create a new project, so from here, a new project, all we need to do is just make sure that that's still selected, which it should be. And then we can just type in project B, create it, and uh, save it, whatnot. And then what will happen is it'll look like this. Cubase will have inside the root folder another project folder called project B with its own audio file, images, and the actual CPR project file with your audio and anything you've recorded put into the respected folder, which is how you want things to be. You don't want it to look like this on the left because this is just going to cause you some issues. Now, when it comes to moving your folders, you can just simply, you know, take your root folder if you want to move everything and move it to a different hard drive. Although I wouldn't recommend that too much just in case if you have a power outage and it's halfway through and or something like the files corrupt or something like that. Um, you could just copy them over to a different location. You could copy your root file to something else and it or everything inside it, all your projects will get copied over as well, but it might take some time to do. Um, you can just do that. And if you have moved everything to a different hard drive, when you open up the CPR file, Cubase might 
not ask you where the file audio files are, the recordings are for that project. And all you would do is say Cubase, they live on, I don't know, let's say we've moved our root folder to uh, H drive. And uh, Cubase is asking us, where's the audio files for project A? We just tell it to navigate to the H drive and to this root folder, or you can tell it to just look at the project folder inside of the root folder on the H drive and it will just load everything up. It will know it's there. Okay, so don't worry too much about that. Now, if you find that you're in the situation of this and your directory looks a little bit like this, how can you fix it so it looks more like this? So this project and its recorded audio files get backed up and they look more like this, okay? Well, this is very easy to do inside of Cubase. It will take you a little bit of time to do, but it's worth doing because you want to be on the safe side of things and you don't want to fall into that trap of deleting this folder and losing all of your recordings. So what I would suggest you do is open up Cubase, open up the project that you were working on. For example, we could just open up uh, this project here. And then if you go to File and go to Backup Project, Cubase will then prompt you for a new location. Okay, so what I'm going to do is let's just pretend hypothetically I've, I've clicked a different drive. I'm going to back it up here and I'm going to create a folder. I'm just going to call it Project B. And then it'll ask us for a project name. I'm just going to click OK. Now, if we go to open that, you'll see that it's put it inside the CPR file inside of that folder we've created. Now, it's important that you create the folder for it because that folder you create acts like, oh my goodness, how many have I made? It acts like this, okay? So if you miss that step of creating a folder, it's just going to end up looking more like this over here, okay? It's just going to have audio file image and project file so when you're backing up just make sure you create that folder and then when you save the backup it'll put things look, looking more like that so i think in terms of um covering library stuff i think i've i think i've checked everything one thing uh i could also mention is that when you're moving projects and your configuration looks a bit like this for your library, if you're just taking a CPR, CB, CPR file and moving it to a different hard drive, don't expect all the audio files to come with it, okay? You need to do it like I showed you with the backup. So hopefully you found this useful, guys. In the next video, we'll look at how you go about backing up your presets or any settings that you've made in Cubase. Um, because when you install Cubase again, you might find all of your like settings for color schemes, key commands and all that kind of stuff. If you haven't backed it up, that disappears as well, or templates and all that kind of thing. So I'll show you how to back those up in the next video. But hopefully this has answered some questions with regards to uh, your projects. And if you have any more questions, then leave them in the box below and I'll do my best to try and help you. So thank you for watching and take it easy.